We're all familiar with the ILS approach as the most common precision instrument approach. If we're expecting our flight to terminate with an ILS, there are certain aspects we know we're going to see. Localizer for side-to-side -side guidance, glide slope for up and down, and a decision altitude 200 or sometimes a bit higher above the threshold height. It's easy to say to ourselves that if we've seen one ILS, we've seen them all. Until we look at something like this piece of modern art, the ILS to runway 18 in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Without going into a full brief like we would on an IFR flight, let's deconstruct how we'd fly this approach step by step. First, we'll want to identify where we're starting this approach from. There's no radar required, so we might not get radar vectors onto final. So let's look at the various points we'd start the approach from. These would be the initial approach fixes, and there are three of them. The UNA and ITEL on the west and east side of the field, and the Pine Bluff VOR, which sits a few miles north of the field. Let's assume in the first example that we're approaching the airport from the west. We'll use IUNA as our initial, as that's the most convenient. This will be assigned by ATC, but they may allow us to request which fix to start from. If we were arriving from the east, we'd use ITEL on the other side and follow a very similar process as the one we're about to demo. Radar isn't required on this approach, but DME is, and it's going to be crucial to identify certain points along the approach, as we'll see. Let's get our VOR set up. First, on NAV1, we'll tune to the localizer frequency. You could put this on NAV2 if you like, but I tend to prefer having the NAV aid we're actually using for the approach guidance on NAV1. That'll be the localizer, 111.7. We'll flip that active, and if we're within range of the signal, the needles will come alive. We'd want to ident this in any other NAV aid we're using, of course. The inbound course is 178, so we'll twist the OBS to that heading. Notice the needles aren't affected by us doing this. The guidance doesn't depend on what OBS setting we have like it would for a VOR. It's only designed to follow the 178 course of the runway. Over on NAV2, we could set the Pine Bluff VOR 116.0 and flip it active. We'll need this to navigate along the arc from Ayune. That fixes along the 244 radial. We'll be intercepting that radial and flying it inbound towards Ayune. So let's twist the OBS and put 244 on the bottom. Its reciprocal 064 is on top. This is the course we'll fly inbound to the fix once we're on the radial. Notice the flag flip from from to to as we twist. We'll need our DME tuned to the Pine Bluff VOR as well. It's at 8 DME from the VOR that we'll know we've reached Ayune while flying inbound on the radial. Right now we're significantly further out from the VOR than 8 miles. ATC tells us to turn right to intercept the radial and clears us for the approach. A 110 heading puts us on about a 45 degree intercept for the radial. When the needle comes towards center, we turn inbound on a heading of 064 and keep the needle in the center. We keep this until we approach IUNA, which we'll know when the DME shows about 8.5. At this point, we'll make a left turn to join the arc. Once on the arc, we'll make sure to adjust our heading to stay 8 miles out and continuously adjust the OBS to help us navigate the arc. Our altitude will be at least 3,700 as shown on this segment of the arc. When we reach CACAC on the 318 radial, we can descend to 2,000 feet. Once 318 is at the bottom of the dial, with the needle centered and the DME still reading 8, we'll know we've reached CACAC and can start the descent. That next line that reads LR338 is our lead radial. This tells us when is an appropriate time to depart the arc and make our turn to intercept the localizer. So with 338 on the bottom of the VOR, we make a right turn to 150, which is about a 30 degree intercept to the localizer, and fly that until the needle on the number one VOR showing the localizer comes alive. We can then intercept that and fly the 178 approach course. We can descend to 1,900 feet as shown on this segment. The next fix is Tucker. There's a lightning bolt symbol showing this is our glide slope intercept. There's also a shaded symbol that looks like a football indicating the outer marker for this approach. The outer marker on an ILS also indicates glide slope intercept. You don't see them on many approach plates anymore and few aircraft have working radio receivers for them. Though you'll often see glass cockpit aircraft like the G1000 indicate markers by deriving their position using GPS position data. As we fly inbound, the glide slope needle comes alive, and when we cross the intercept, we receive the outer marker, and it sounds like this. We can now descend along the glide slope for the remainder of the approach. Fundamentally, this is a pretty standard ILS approach, but with some less common methods of getting established inbound. We see another one if we consider arriving from the northwest. We're not in a good position to fly to Ayune and make a hard turn to join the arc, so we'll use the Pine Bluff VOR as our initial approach. We're cleared for the approach by going direct to the VOR. 
First, we'll twist the nav to OBS still receiving the VOR to give us a two indication with the needle centered. A one, two, five course will take us direct to the station. As we fly inbound, we look for station passage when the needle swings out and the flag flips from to to from. From here, we're gonna do basically a very large procedure turn using a kind of teardrop entry as we descend. Let's bring in the profile view to visualize our descent too. From passing the VOR, we'll turn left to intercept the 022 radial, which we'll set into our number two receiver. We'll intercept that and track it outbound. Meanwhile, we can descend to or above 2000 feet. We'll need our DME again because the next fix, NETA, is identified at 12.4 DME from the VOR. When we get there, we'll set our inbound course of 178 on the number one VOR for the localizer. We'll start a left turn to complete the procedure turn. Now, net is about five or six miles east of the localizer course, so a standard rate turn is gonna put us significantly inside of the localizer. We could do a half standard rate turn, and in a slower aircraft, we may wanna stop the turn at about a 30 degree angle to intercept the localizer. As long as we intercept outside of Raylo at 8 DME. It's at that point we can come down to 1,900 feet, and again, we'll be looking for glide slope intercept. When we get it, we'll follow the guidance down to the decision altitude, 466 feet. Let's look at the missed approach. It's depicted graphically on the profile view and begins with a climb to 1,000 feet. We'll be intercepting the 211 radial, so we'll twist that on nav too. Ideally, we'd have done that a bit earlier than when we're actually on the missed approach. The next step is to make a climbing right turn to 2,000 feet and intercept that radial. We'll fly about 250 to intercept. When the NAV2 needle comes in, we'll track it outbound. We're looking for the holding fix, Rison. That's along the 211 radial we're currently on at 15 DME. So when we have that indication, we've arrived, and we can join the hold using a parallel entry. So this approach had it all, DME arc, procedure turns, outer markers, and goes to show that no approach should be assumed to be run of the mill or the same as others you've flown. Always check the plates thoroughly in your brief and do as best you can to fly it in your head before even beginning it in real life.